Welcome to our Lecture 13 series in Applied Statistics and Probability for Engineers. As we get started in this chapter, we are going to be focusing on design and analysis of single factor experiments using the ANOVA. When designing experiments, engineers can determine which subset of variables has the greatest influence on process performance. It's not that we want to manipulate our findings, we just want to be able to use what we find to describe what's going on. So the results of an experiment then can lead to improved process yield, reduced variability in the process and closer conformance to nominal or target requirements, reduced design and development time, and reduced cost of operation. So all of these things that I just listed right here, the results of an experiment, are good things, right? So all experiments are designed experiments, whether they're good experiments or bad experiments. Sometimes they're not random experiments, sometimes they're not performed as they should, but every experiment is designed to some degree. Okay, so every experiment during its process involves a sequence of activities. First is conjecture, and this then is the original hypothesis that motivates the experiment. So I'm sure a lot of you have been part of this process. Maybe it's like a brainstorming meeting or someone comes up with a need to find out something. But this is the part where you come up with the idea. Just this week, some of my friends and I were talking about we need to come up with some kind of study that figures out why people get so ornery after playing video games. So see, someone needs to actually study that and find what variables then lead to people getting grumpy after they play video games. The second step then is experiment, the test performed to investigate the conjecture. So this can be tricky to design and there's a lot of factors that go into it and we're going to talk about those in a minute. So after the experiment is done and performed and the data is compiled, we have the analysis and that then is the statistical analysis of the data from the experiment itself. And lastly we have our conclusion and the conclusion then is what's been learned about the original conjecture from the experiment. Sometimes, or often, the experiment will lead to a revised conjecture and a new experiment and so forth. So if you think back to our hypothesis testing, all our hypothesis testing told us is either there's a change in the status quo or we should leave the status quo alone. So if you think about it, if we run all of that statistical analysis and we come up with the fact that yes, our test was statistically significant or there was a change relative to what we're used to, then we would need to come up with a new idea and retest and come up with more answers, okay? So sometimes this can be a cyclical process and this is what we talked about a lot in chapter one. So let's recap for a second so we can figure out how to design these new experiments. So a z-statistic just tested a claim about a population mean with a sample mean when sigma is known, okay? And remember that was a larger sample size, greater than 40. With the one sample t statistic, we tested a claim about a population mean with sample mean when variance was unknown, and this then was kind of a smaller sample size, okay? The independent measures t statistic then tests a claim about the difference between two different populations. So this was the difference in means, where we used two different samples and evaluated their mean difference. So we can use any of these three tests to help us design an experiment. However, what happens if I have more than just two different populations? What if I have three different populations? Or like this graph right here depicts what if I have one, two, three, four different populations? Which in real life maybe we'll have multiple variables or multiple populations at the same time. So then we would use something called the analysis of variance or the ANOVA. So the ANOVA's forte then is it can test the difference between two or more populations by using two or more samples. So the tested hypothesis is very similar to the independent measures t statistic or the difference in means like we did before, but now we can apply it when we have more than two groups. So this is the goal of the ANOVA, okay, is multiple populations, multiple sample means, multiple sample variances, we can test all of those things at once. So the ANOVA is designed to detect differences among means from populations subject to different treatments. So let's talk a little bit about our ANOVA or our analysis of variance. So the ANOVA is designed to detect differences among means from populations subject to different treatments. And we talked about this word treatments in a few different videos, but treatments basically is my different variables or my different contributors to my overall model. 
So the ANOVA is also a joint test, meaning the equality of several population means is tested simultaneously or jointly. So the ANOVA looks for the equality of several population means by looking at two estimators of the population variance, hence the analysis of variance. So this is something that's a little different from the other ones we've done before. Before, in the z-test and the t-test and the two-population t-test, I feel like we have focused on means, and that's all we have dealt with and compared. In ANOVA, we are then going to use variances, okay? And we'll talk more about this in just a few slides, but we focus on variances then because we have multiple populations and we need to know the variance within each population as well as the variance between each different population. We can use the ANOVA testing for a lot of different applications. So I wrote a few down here that are kind of common. So we can do product testing, add copy testing, and concept testing as some of our common applications. It can also be used in retail environments or simulated lab type environments. So the beauty about this is that we can manipulate certain variables and then observe changes in other variables. We can then use this for so many different purposes. And it's not like we're breaking any rules here. What we're doing then is testing certain variables and how their contribution works toward the model. So we hold some steady while we watch others change. So this video then is going to be a brief overview of how we are going to do an ANOVA calculation. So first of all, an experiment can be done with just one independent variable or factor or with multiple independent variables. That's a nice thing about the ANOVA is that it's flexible. You can use one variable or multiple. So with the ANOVA, the key to success is the degree of control on the various independent variables that are being manipulated during the experiment. We want to control some variables while watching to see how others change. Okay, so let's talk briefly about the ANOVA. So we've talked about this in a previous video, but we have the one-way ANOVA, which is the analysis of variance for one factor. We have more than one factor that can be used for a two, three, or four-way ANOVA, and we're going to be talking about those in the next chapter. Those are called factorial experiments. And then we have a continuous variable that can then be added to the model, which is called an ANACOVA, which is analysis of covariance. And then we have another type which is called the repeated measures ANOVA and that then can handle replicated measurements on the same observation unit or subject. So when we say the word replicate, and we'll talk about this in the next slide, that's the same treatment doing multiple things, okay? So like if we were studying how a person takes tests, I would then go and take multiple tests. Okay, so some terminology that we're going to hear. The level of the factor are sometimes called treatments and we're going to refer to that in our book so we will call them factors or treatments. Each treatment then has multiple observations or replicates and we won't get too much to that in one way ANOVA or single factor ANOVA but replicates are one person or one subject doing multiple things. The runs that we're going to perform or the number of experiments we're going to perform are run in random order. So we want them to be independent variables. We don't want them to have to be in a specific order, okay? Okay, so as we get things set up, we're going to always and forever create this table. That is if you do it by hand. So I know there's so many tables in the ANOVA, but this is kind of your shortcut. I'm going to have treatments 1 through A, and then for each treatment, I'm going to have all of my observations that go this way up to my sample size, which is N. So notice my number of treatments goes to A, and my number of observations is my sample size, N. So then I'm going to total up each treatment row, which is going to be this, and then I'm going to find its individual average. Then I'm going to find the overall average right here, which is called the overall average or the grand average or the grand mean. Okay, so here when we're dealing with single factor experiments, we have A levels or treatments, and then the observations for each treatment can be represented by a random variable. So you're going to see so many formulas with so many different letters and symbols and variables that you just need to remember we have A treatments with N observations each. So if you remember from lecture one that a basic random variable can be modeled as follows, where y is a random variable. You've seen this a lot now, I hope. y equals mu plus epsilon, where mu is my average or my constant, and epsilon then is the variation. So this then can be extended to a linear statistical model like this. It's kind of ugly, huh? 
So where y sub ij, where we just mean treatments and observations, is equal to mu plus tau, that's a new Greek letter we're learning, tau sub i plus epsilon sub ij, where i is my number of treatments all the way to a, and j is my number of observations all the way to n. So a is my number of treatments, n is my number of observations, mu is the mean value to all treatments, tau then is my ith treatment, okay? So that's going to be some value within A, okay? So some, some treatment that I'm going to look into. So note, we can now define individual mu or treatment mu equals mu plus tau to simplify this expression to look like this. So it still is going to be my average plus some difference, and we're going to figure out those values. So we will see an actual example with real numbers in the next video.